I saw the wild robot, first of all, beautiful. Second of all, lots of tutorial ideas. And I think kind of an interesting one that is relevant to the movie and has interesting implications is the face of Raz. Literally this kind of thing, which is super easy to model because it's basically a modified sphere. But of course, what we find interesting is this lens and especially this matrix rain effect. I've made something like this before. So I thought, let's just make this thing in like 15 minutes. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, but let's get a bit into the tutorial and we'll talk about that later. I'm going to start off with a sphere. That sphere should be of a high variety, high variety resolution. Let's do 100 by 60. Let's see. Okay, this is more so like fan art, but you can see there's this very deliberate kind of ellipsoid thing going on in the back, kind of like an alien head. Side view, go to wireframe so I can make like a selection like this, make it proportional editing so when I pull, it pulls like more of it, and it's just going to be very gentle. Next, we need eyes. And I know, good topology people. You crazy. There's no reason to have good topology. I'm just going to cut out some cylinders as kind of like booleans to maybe like one here, rotate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut away another shape. So difference of this cylinder and and boom, if we like this setup over here, why not mirror this result, which will also carry over any like extra effects we do. By default, it's going to mirror negative X to positive X, I believe. So that's why I got rid of the eye. Just turn on bisect and the face only has kind of like two other features. Main features is these two dots, which strangely enough, if you look at this one, it makes it constantly look like it's going, ooh, take a cylinder. We're going to boolean it away, make it tiny. And from the design I saw, we kind of take this eye line divided in half and it should be symmetrical, right? So there should be one here. And at the same distance, uh, there should be one over here. Take this duplicate on the Z. And of course, we are going to cut this away as well. So shade auto smooth the cylinder, also that one. And just like that, now everything is smooth in the wild robot. I'm just going to apply everything. You can totally keep this procedural workflow and change the cutting shapes to begin with, but I, I don't care. I don't want to. And I'm going to separate out this kind of like loop on the eye because when I try to alt click, it doesn't really recognize it as a loop. So let's make our lives easy. I'm going to take all of this. I'm going to separate by selection. So now this is its own uh, nice option. Object, I hit F to fill. And now I'm just going to do this. I'm going to I for inset, E for extrude, I for inset, E for extrude. And you want to make sure that the remaining I where like all the interesting stuff is happening is still like quite large. So that when we bring this back, that looks pretty interesting to me. Add in slight details like a bevel here, a couple like smooth bevels that have a lot of like vertices or something. Final thing is right now this is just kind of going inwards, which is fine. But I don't think that's how the original works. It kind of like tapers inwards. We want to just kind of scale in this like middle part a little. So just something like that. I mean, if you look at it from this direction, it kind of reads correctly, at least to me. To mirror this, I'm going to mirror modifier, and that should just work right off the bat. So this is the head, this is the eyes. Well, let's kind of take a selection here that kind of goes from the eye up to the face. I mean, like we're taking this row, we're taking it all the way to the top, this kind of like line where the glowing is happening. For this one, I want to extrude along normals. That's alt E, bring that in a little. It's going to make some bad topology. You should never worry about that. You can always just delete faces and massage it. We're going to take this component, turn on snapping to the nearest, I guess, edge. Kind of go like this. I can soften this a little more by kind of bringing the next nearest edge up a bit and then the next one up a bit. And hopefully that kind of smooths it out. Also, this is another instance where I can mirror, turn on that bisect and now our work is uh, copied. I believe similarly, we have the same uh, kind of line going downwards. To get kind of the ring of light, I'm just going to do some lazy topology. Because this doesn't really like loop cuts because the geometry sucks, uh, that's where we use a nice tool that I feel like people don't use. It's bisect. It literally lets you take a point and draw a cut that we can kind of fake to uh, look like a loop cut. And now it now it likes the geometry. Interesting. Extrude inwards just a bit so we get this kind of lip over here that reads. Okay, that that's modeling. It exists. Let's do something interesting. I'm going to use cycles to basically look dev this because I want the emissive materials to kind of behave nicely. Make a main head material. This is just going to be basically a metallic, darkish, white. Make a emissive material. For that, let me just kind of make it red to begin with so we can see and then just make a uh, selection for what should receive that. I'm going to click assign so that these areas are isolated and same kind of thing over here. I'll join these and I'm going to assign. Beautiful. And actually, let me just apply the smearing for trouble later. That gets color. I believe this interior gets color. I'm not sure. Just going to use a base principled BSDF. And then for the emission, I'm going to pick a high number like one, pick a color like this bluish teal thing, and then increase it to your liking. If it feels a bit too much in certain sections, you can totally kind of take these areas and inset them a little. You can select these sections and then assign the uh, main material if you want. Now let's do the lenses, new material. I'm just going to call this one black because it's just going to be kind of like a black plasticky metal thing. I know those don't correspond. Let's select the inner eye on both of these. Hit more. That's so it's going to select like the next edge loop. And a uh, quick trick, if you do an operation and you want to do it again and again and again, instead of hitting, you know, select more, select more, hit shift R over and over again. And that will just kind of repeat the operation. And for that, I'm going to assign the black material. This should be a pretty reflective kind of plasticky looking 
looking thing. In fact, maybe a bit gray. And additionally, on top of that, we're going to need our literal eye material. I'm just going to make them literally like black mirrors. And at this point, it would probably be helpful to have something uh, to reflect off of. Okay, so this is going to be good enough. We're going to download this HDRI. We are going to use this new one. Nice thing about this is now we actually have something to reflect off of. And this tells me a few things. First of all, the main material should be brighter white and maybe a bit rougher. Again, this is like a robot that's been in the wilderness and there's moss growing on it and whatever. And the roughness for the mirror should just be slightly above zero. It shouldn't be perfectly reflective. Let's start adding visual interest, right? This thing is worn. It's been through the woods. It accumulates dirt. I actually did a talk with a guy today, like a consultation literally about this. And here's the trick I showed him. I said, you take a bevel node. This is going to give you the normal coordinates, but slightly blurred. So as opposed to the uh, normal coordinates that look like this, bevel is just slightly blurred on the edges, which means if I calculate the distance or kind of difference is another way to think about it uh, between them, it isolates these nice sections. I'm just going to make it a bit higher contrast. For now, let me just kind of mix two BSDFs together. So we have our original. Now we're going to have our dirt BSDF, which maybe should just be a diffuse. That's going to be kind of like a dark brown dirt material. We're going to mix these together and we're going to say, keep the dirt only on those edges. All of a sudden we get this nice dirt. Of course, this isn't like the perfect mask. It looks a bit boring and we can totally break this up with some like noise texture for like procedural randomness. Bring up the scale. I'm getting tired of doing the color ramp. Let's just do brightness contrast. You bring up the detail, you bring up the roughness and you can kind of multiply these things together to say, you know, keep the uh, edge map, but only where there's like dirt. And I would recommend just taking your result and multiplying it by a big number so it gets really visible. And now kind of edge and tear. I'm going to take this, throw it into a node group called grunge so we can use it in a bit. And here I want to do basically the opposite where the white underneath the plastic is exposed. So I'm just going to mix these, use this as a mixing factor. And now you could see this is what it looked like before and after. Okay, let's get to the interesting part, which of course is the matrix rain eye. Now this doesn't apply to everybody, but is it possible that you're watching and all of this is whew, 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 going over your head? Well, in that case, it's possible you might be newer to Blender, in which case I have the solution for you. So let me segue here. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, and this is a online platform where you can learn a bunch of different skills online, but particularly digital skills and particularly Blender, which I'll get to in a second. Things like photography, things like 3D animation, of course, basic graphic design, advanced graphic design. And on top of basic search, there's also these learning paths, which are a sequence of curated videos that knows where you left off to go to the next one. So you're not hopping between beginner and advanced and it all makes sense. If you're trying to learn Blender, I have a specific uh, course recommendation. Southern Shoddy 3D made a course called Your First Day in Blender 3D. Southern Shoddy has recent, well, kind of recently made a short film that I thought was very cool, Watermelon Girl. But he has a very like particular style that I think kind of lends itself to beginner friendly. Either way, in this course, it's talking about kind of basic UI. How do you use this? How do you like actually get going before you get into the super complicated stuff? The first 500 people who click the link below in the description are going to get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Perfect for watching the Southern Shoddy thing and more. Or you could watch the Southern Shoddy thing in super slow-mo and it would take you a month to do that. Let's get back to the wild robot. I'm, I'm tired of these tame robots. These goody two-shoe robots. I need a wild robot. What you're going to see is that it really looks like the falling green rain code where we basically kind of looks like we have a bunch of circles already there like a grid and we're choosing on each row or on each column which ones are illuminated and by how much. To do this, probably the easiest way is we're just going to use raw, straight up a raw map. I'm going to take these two and I'm going to unwrap them. Maybe, maybe a better way to do this is I'm going to hit reset, which will make them both kind of like overlap, which is actually fine in my case because the same thing should be happening here and here. Basically, we're going to start off with the texture coordinates, specifically the UV coordinates, which you can see reflect these changes over here. We know to make a single dot. The way we do this is we take vector math and we calculate the distance from the center. So this happens to be the distance from uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, get these eye patterns. And the reason this works is if you have a plane that is our UV space, the center point right here is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in a UV space. So if we're saying look at the distance from here, that is going to make a radial map that gets brighter as you go away from the center and then quite black near the uh, origin. If we now take this UV coordinates and we kind of tile it so that it happens many, many, many times, now we have the same effect, but it's repeated. Easy way to do this, you're going to take your UV space and scale it by a factor of 10. We can take this, we run it through a fraction. All of a sudden we recover the detail. I'm going to make the interior white, the exterior black, and just kind of bring this in a bit and pick a radius that I like. And now the name of the game is basically revealing the dots based on this kind of like matrix rain effect. And note that we can change this number here at any time. So if I make it 20, it's now twice as dense, etc. I can kind of co-work over here so that we can see what we're doing. So everything we're doing here affects the eye. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to isolate each one of these rows so that I can control them individually and say, oh, how bright should you be? I take my UV coordinates and specifically I care about, you would think it'd be the X axis, right? Because we're going from right to left, but it's actually the Y axis. We care about how vertical are we? Which row are we on? And just like we did this over here, 
I multiply again by 20, same number, and then instead of a fraction, I'm just gonna say round up to the nearest number. If I multiply this by a tiny number, you see we basically made this like discretized, quantized kind of gradient. And instead of getting the numbers like one through 20 or zero through 19, we just send it through basically a random generator that gives us either different colors or different numbers. So we could say this black or white dictates how fast is the matrix rain going or how bright is it? You can use it for all kinds of things. In particular, I'm going to take my X coordinate now that goes from left to right, which I can use like a greater than to basically show how this can be kind of like an animating effect. If I make this greater than our like special mask over here, we get kind of randomness and it looks uh, interesting. I think I want to get the distance between both of these. The way to do that in one dimensional land is you take these two numbers, our random number and our X component, you subtract them, but then you also want to send this through a absolute value because you don't want to have negative distances. And this creates a nice effect where we have this banding. I'm not just going to kind of leave it like this. I'm going to color ramp it, starting off black everywhere. And only in the mid sections do we have any kind of like visibility. I'm going to make a nice kind of fall off where it's sharp on one side, but not on the other. And this is basically what I want to animate going from left to right. Our X coordinate goes from zero to one. So as I add this, I shift the uh, black point. It looks like it's going from left to right. But we have this issue where again, it's constrained to zero to one. Basically, I'm going to multiply by let's say five or something. And then just like before, we're going to bring that interval back to zero to one. So that's the trick, which when we plug this in, will give us a result that kind of looks like that. You can pick the number, maybe it's two, maybe it's something else. But the beauty of this is, is now when we offset it, it should just kind of work, right? Yeah, we get this infinite scroll. In fact, you can multiply by one to kind of not get that repetition. And from the robot's eyes, which is where we care about it, it will look like this. Awesome. I'm gonna make a driver that is the frame number divided by 30. So this is just going to increase over time without any keyframes. But what makes this look weird is all of these are the same length and they're going at the same speed. This is where we want to introduce uh, some of that randomness. So remember, we basically isolated these like random bands from before. And instead of adding a bunch of like white noise textures for a bunch of random numbers, it comes with a random number, but also a random color that I can separate now into one, two, three sets of random numbers. Let's use the first of these random numbers to dictate the speed that it's going. So I'm going to take hash frame divided by 30, which by default, if I set it to one, it will look like this. If I set it to five, it's going to go much faster. And I want to use our random number to guide this. So let's use this right here. And now you're going to see different rows go at different speeds. Of course, some of these are barely going to move because the random number can be really close to zero. Easy way to compensate is instead of going from zero to one at minimum 20% speed. And then at most, let's say 130, 1.3% speed. The reason you can kind of see what's going on and kind of notice this repetition is because there are too many, there aren't enough rather kind of cells or kind of bands to look at. Well, remember, we use this number 20 kind of arbitrarily. So I'm just going to pick a different number where as I increase this, let's say it's 52. Now it's like a much more detailed effect. So let's make it 30. Long story short, we have one mask that gives the circles. We have one mask that gives these lines. Just like always, we multiply their effects. So now same thing, but it's showing uh, nice circles. I'm going to say be emissive at these dots. And that could be kind of the same color as before, right? And we can make that stronger by multiplying by like five or something. So look at that. And in fact, because this is ultimately guided by UV maps, as you move it, it's going to sample different parts. And you're going to see in the uh, movie, there's almost like an arc to this. So one of them's kind of rotated up a little and the other one's kind of rotated down a little, which gives this impression that there's this like arc. We could have it kind of like transition as a gradient to kind of like a turquoise color. And we do that in a way where we use this uh, gradient. We can motivate a um, mixed color using this gradient where one of them is blue and the other one is kind of greenish, which when we put in our color will give us kind of a more interesting effect. So this is before, this is after. Again, I just want to mention that like we can totally do things like just take this whole thing and multiply it by like three. So now it's like, oh, there's something intense going on. Like, oh, task completed. I guess one thing is these, I believe are exact copies minus a rotation. So I think I'm going to take this and just move it off to the side. I'm going to keep the rotation, but that way it looks like, oh, some of this signal was transmitted over to that side. I guess one thing is we could just add like one general big wear and tear. So instead of just having this be white or red or whatever, it will be white with some overall like large scale noise. So what I mean is I'm going to bring the scale down yet bring the detail up quite a lot. And I'm going to use this as a color ramp to go between our nice white color, which should be most of it. But then there will be kind of like black splotches, but just like a nice fading. So this is without, this is with. And so too, can we use this as like a free bump map without thinking too much about it? <laughs> Clearly a bit intense. Uh, take the distance down, take the strength down, definitely. I mean, really just the lighting is different here and more time was taken. But the general principle is there, right? Like the only other thing is you'd want these like eyes to like rotate and stuff like that. But because it would be really difficult to actually rotate the geometry, especially since it's not like X, Y, or Z aligned, maybe we can do this by rotating UVs. So I can unwrap this to be a perfect circle 
and this can be the thing that rotates. If I use something like a uh, checkerboard texture and then map it to our UVs, you can see as I rotate it, it looks like the eye itself is rotating as kind of like a lens focusing in. So I'm going to make a material called black spinning. It's basically going to be the same thing where I copy all of this and then I bring it over here. Let me actually assign these uh, materials. That is going to receive some texture so you can actually tell its orientation such that when I rotate it, it will look like it's focusing in. Now, how do you animate UVs rotating? Well, you don't. You do it in the material. So you take your UVs, you say vector rotate. So our center is 0.5, 0.5. Our axis is the Z axis. And as we change the angle, boom, now it's rotating. And this is something we can also kind of keyframe or do a driver for. And yeah, it's very subtle, but it is rotating. So maybe let's unwrap this. Let's also unwrap this. So these are some tricks to just not animate, basically. I believe if we take one of these and flip it, would that rotate counterclockwise? So I'm going to scale on the X axis, but by minus one. And yeah, now one's going one direction, one's going the other. I think the rim, like this rim should have been illuminated. Oh, that's great because that actually catches the reflection of the thing. Give it a little dumb body, little sphere like that. Now it's like an R2-D2. <laughs> if I was to take this a step further, I would quantize it. So it's not like this perfectly smooth motion, but it kind of hops a little. Then it kind of updates so fast that it almost looks real time. And maybe each row can have its own like update speed. In fact, you already know what I'm thinking, right? Like if I add a snapping node over here, let's set it to like 0.2. I mean, that does something that makes it look more like mechanical. What if I set it to 0.1? Yeah, this way it kind of updates in this kind of laggy way, which is more interesting. Okay, whatever. Add a snap. And why not? Like the way we were doing, we can use like a different random number. We send this through a map range and we could say, you can snap to anything between 0.1 and like 0.25. So some of them will update uh, slower than others. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is the way. Well, anyways, if you want to get the black file, it'll be on my website, www.cgmatter.com and also on Patreon. But if you had to choose, I would uh, pick the website. Patreon gets less of a cut and uh, HTML. Uh, th this recording, I don't know if it came through, very sloppy. I'm hoping that I can recover it in the edit. Did I do a good job? I don't know.